It is time to talk about how both my robots went at ARC's May meet. We had low drinks here and we had Vogon poetry, uh, the overhead saw and the overhead spinner. I brought the pair of them because I expected that low drinks would kind of blow itself up and I wouldn't get too many fights with it. You can see though, still in a good condition. Currently not rocking the low drinks or the high drinks bar, but we'll talk about that in half a second. And rather than what I would usually do, which is go through these fights in the exact order that they appeared, I'm thinking we're gonna do them in two different halves. So we'll do a Vogon poetry half and we'll do low drinks first. So we're gonna look at all of low drinks' fights very quickly because unfortunately a lot of them were very quick. So having said that, let's get started with a fight against a robot called William Wagtail. This is a very nasty vertical spinner. <laughs> As I mentioned, this was a very quick fight. A lot of Low Drinks' fights were very quick. Uh, and unfortunately, in this fight, not a lot happened. We tried to spin the weapon up. The weapon didn't really get going. Uh, one hit from William Wagtail, and we were over the wall. And not only were we were over the wall, we were into the pit in the other arena. Like, look at this. <laughs> It's just a snipe shot. Like, I, I don't know how else to describe that. It was just fantastic. I mean, not really fantastic to be on the other side of that, but uh, it was just interesting to see happen, uh, especially getting me in the pit on the other side. Brilliant. Anyway, that was a loss. Uh, and yeah, we are struggling to spin the weapon up. So. Uh, going into the second fight, up against a robot called Bobby, I was really hoping that I could get the weapon spun up, and so the plan was to run away and give myself the space to do that. Ay, 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 and unfortunately we didn't get the space to do that, so I tried, uh, however, yeah, we got barely spinning and then, like, I was thinking we we're about ready to actually get the motor spun up, because it does take it a second to get the motor into woo mode, uh, but unfortunately he hit us there, and you could see us, see that when he hit, the kind of, the weapon just slowed to nothing immediately, and put us right back to square one, then he hit us, which the chassis survived pretty well, despite the fact that it's very thin TPU on a PCB base. Uh, it survived that, but it did flick us upside down. And despite the fact that the chassis is actually lighter than the Hydrinx blade, uh, we still didn't have anything. We still couldn't do anything. Theoretically, if it's spun up properly, we should be able to like gyro our way back out of that position. But this weapon motor is just not strong enough. There needs to be a version 2, and that version 2 needs a much chunkier weapon motor, which means I, I'm gonna have to pull more weight out of the chassis, I, I guess. That's a thing for another time. We'll definitely do another video on low jinx here. Anyway, that is two very, very quick losses. So now it is time to look at the next fight, because the robot is still working, I'm just getting unlucky with things. Uh, so the next fight is up against a robot called Swipe Left. This is a horizontal saw. Three. 
this one was annoying. Uh, first of all, I had a bit of a weird intermittent drive issue on the right hand side, which meant I was crab walking a fair bit. Again, couldn't get the weapon spun up. And because I was crab walking, I couldn't really give myself space to get out of there and allow the weapon time to spin up. And then of course, we had the issue where Bobby came flying over the wall and landed in our arena. Uh, he got William Wagtail, just like I had in a previous fight. Uh, and then he drove himself into the pit because being forced out of the arena means that you're out even if you land in a space that you can still drive. So yeah, he just drove himself into the pit. Uh, unfortunately, right as that had happened, I'd been flipped over upside down again, which meant that, yeah, when the fight resumed, it was literally just a count out and we were out. At this point, I was getting fairly frustrated with how the robot was performing because it was really, really struggling on that weapon spin up, which was a huge, huge issue. Uh, so we put on a different weapon and we went on into the final fight here up against a drum robot named Bonham. Uh, except that we didn't because uh, we did, we did actually go into that fight. However, uh, I failed the Twitch test here and that is because I did something wrong uh, and very, very wrong. When I put this old blade on low jinx, so this is a 50 gram blade as compared to the high jinx bar, which is 77 grams. I decided to test to see if this fixed the issue because I had a number of blades all the way down to 40 grams. So I was like, oh, I'll just test this in the test box. I'll make sure that it spins up. And if it doesn't, we can throw a lower weight bar on it until it does spin up. That was fine. This blade as it stands spun up, no problem in the test box. Unfortunately, I didn't film that. Uh, I just threw it in the test box because I was like, oh cool, I'll just get it spinning. I'll just make sure it works. And then I'll put it in the arena and you'll see it fight in the arena. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. It spun up, it spun up totally fine. There was no cogging or real start issues. It like started. Uh, and then I pushed it a little bit higher and it started vibrating and I didn't turn the weapon speed back down again. At that point, I should have decreased the weapon speed and stopped and called it a day and put it into the arena. However, I didn't do that. Uh, and the vibration got bad enough that the top cover here uh, rose up slightly stopping the weapon, like if I do this, the weapon stops. Uh, and so it hit itself and basically bounced around inside the test box a number of times, uh, ejecting the wheel that was having all of the issues and its speed controller, they got kind of ripped out of the robot. Um, and yeah, the top cover came up and the receiver came kind of spilling out the back as well. Now, I thought that was all that was gonna happen there. I fixed the drive motor, I got all that soldered back together, I tucked everything back in, I bolted it back together, and I threw it into the arena for that Bonham fight. And unfortunately, the receiver had died. In that explosion in the test box, I had killed the receiver. Uh, it does power up, but it will no longer bind to new transmitters, and it lost the bind to the current transmitter it is on. So I think it's just got a shock and like one of the components on the board has shifted or cracked or broken and it just cannot talk to a receiver or to a transmitter anymore. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah, that is where we left that fight. Uh, but as mentioned, this motor is good enough to spin up a 50 gram blade, but not good enough to spin up a 75. So I have plans already. I think I know what I'm gonna do to make a new version of Lojinx that will actually spin the bar properly this time. Uh, because yes, no, I, I, I need that. This, this, this was ridiculous. We're not, we're not having this problem again. Uh, if we build Lojinx version two and it doesn't spin the blade properly in testing, uh, we're just not gonna fight it because this was very, very frustrating. Uh, having said that though, because I expected Lojinx to explode, I brought another robot. I bought Vogon Poetry so that I would have something else to fight for the day. And I am very glad I did given the performance of Lojinx on the day. Uh, so now let's talk about Vogon Poetry because uh, that was all of uh, Lojinx's fights for the day. Definitely did not make finals. 
So we're gonna move on. Uh, and first up for a brand new Vogon Poetry was Blade Tip, a robot that we've done pretty well against in the past. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so this one's on me. I, uh, I tried to get Vogon Poetry up and running too quickly, uh, effectively is the problem here. So I had slapped on this little piece of wire as a self-writing mechanism, and it is just too weak. Like I can push this with my hand and bend it with my hand, despite having like coiled the wire around itself to try and make sure it was strong enough. Uh, and that meant that one of the times that we got upside down, it got caught under the robot, and then that was that, effectively. Um, yeah, it's just, it is a, a design issue and a bit of a control issue. The other thing that has happened with Vogon Poetry is that in the previous iterations, we've been running on a servo, which means I've got positional control. I can say, go to this point and stop or go to this point and stop, or go all the way down and chomp into the opponent, or go to here and stop. Uh, however, at the moment we're just on an N20, which means all I can say is go backwards or go forwards, which means I can't tell it to stop here, which makes balancing the robot a little bit difficult, especially as there's a fair amount of mass in this motor and saw blade, even with, even with these kind of skeletonized saw blades that we have going on. So effectively, it just meant that uh, Vogon Poetry was very difficult to drive in this fight, and I ended up upside down and very easily pushed into the pit, uh, which is all really my fault. There's not really a lot that I can say about this one. It was just effectively new bot gremlins, uh, because while this is an old design revamped and revitalized, uh, the new weight distribution, the fact that this uh, self-writing mechanism is not the same as it used to be, the fact that I can't positionally control where the saw is anymore, definitely meant that I was basically controlling a brand new robot. So anyway, we're going to move on from that fight because uh, that was obviously a loss and we're going to go and look at a robot called Buzz. This is a vertical saw using an aluminium case as its body. So I was keen for this one because I wanted to see how well these new saw blades cut into metal. <laughs>
least this is one of the better fights we've seen so far. It lasted a lot longer, it was more of a slugfest. Uh, the control issues definitely showed themselves in this fight. Uh, the proportional control was a real issue, because what I realized in this fight was a lot of the times with old Vogon poetry, when I was taking off, I was setting the saw to in front of the robot, or in front of the main chassis of the robot, which meant that as I took off, I didn't get a leverage up effect. And I was definitely getting that in this fight. There was multiple times I was taking off and lifting the dustpan straight into his weapon, which was really not good because he got a lot of really good cuts on the weapon, or on the dustpan, and the dustpan was really thin and flimsy to start with. Uh, I also hadn't properly sanded down the front of the wedge, so even though I was using acetate, uh, yeah, he was getting under me more than I wanted him to, especially. Uh, because I wanted to be able to like lift him up and put the saw down into him But I really only got to do that when his weapon shut down now his weapon shut down a couple of times during this fight Which is interesting. I'm not really sure what was going on there But buzz and swipe left are built by the same driver and are a father and son team So the father drives swipe left and buzz is driven by the son and uh, one, his weapon shut down, his father came over and was like, turn your control off, turn it back on, and then the weapon started back up again when he did that. So if you watch the fight again, uh, right before his weapon starts back up, there is a period where he's stopped, and that is because he's turning his controller off and turning back it back on again. I'm not really sure what the go is there, it might be an ESC thing, but it did give me an opening to get the saw in and get a good cut on him. Uh, and I was actually, at that point in time, because he hadn't, you know, rebooted his controller and I didn't know he was going to get the weapon back, I was like, great, this is going to be my time now. Like, you were threatening with that weapon, and now the weapon is gone, and it's just going to be me cutting into this aluminium box for a while now. And unfortunately, that's what not what happened, because he reset his controller, he got his weapon back. Uh, and then very soon after that, because of the weird dance that this machine does, uh, especially falling over backwards if the saw is too far back. He got in underneath me and grabbed hold of the weapon wires with his saw. Thankfully, I use a little servo connector here on the weapon so that I can like unplug and replug it fairly easily. And that saved me in this case because while the wires wrapped up around his weapon, they just unplugged and didn't break, which was great because especially when being yanked by a saw like that, it's very, very possible for wires to be pulled straight out of a motor, which you just cannot fix on the fly. And while I do have spares of these, they are not wired up for this robot, so it would have meant like half an hour or so of making a brand new motor set up for this robot, and I was very, very not wanting to do that effectively. That was a bad, weird choice of words. Anyway, uh, the bad news doesn't kind of end there because of course he then kept his weapon going with some intermittent fluctuation stuff in there and I was having trouble because I was trying to keep him away from the newly exposed cable because inside the robot was my ESC and I only have one of those. I did not bring a spare to this event and yes, unfortunately it did get popped out and start dangling into the dustpan, which meant that I stopped really trying to use the dustpan. I was really like backing into him a lot to try and keep him away from the dustpan because I did not want him to cut into that ESC and destroy it because that would have been Vogon Poetry's day done effectively. Or at least it would have been Vogon Poetry's day done as a saw bot. I probably would have kept running it as a clamper, but I, yeah, I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to fight the saw, I wanted to use the saw, so I needed to protect that ESC. Obviously, uh, I was still having drive issues, I was still having weirdness with the chassis, so it did not work that well to kind of keep him away from the dustpan. And when I realized that was gonna be an issue, I did everything I could to drive towards the pit, but by this point I was having all sorts of drive issues and I flexed myself upside down and I got caught again on the self rider. Uh, just, I had a lot of issues there. And all I was trying to do was get to the pit and throw myself in. Uh, and unfortunately he actually pushed me away from the, cup, the pit a couple of times or uh, yeah, like I was take off backwards and then get a slight turn and end up away from the pit. Uh, which didn't really help with the cause that I was trying to do. Eventually I did manage to get myself into the pit, but not before he had managed to hit 
the wires just near the ESC and actually rip the signal wire off the ESC board. Thankfully, that was a pretty easy fix because it didn't actually do any damage to the pad on the ESC and I could just solder it back on again, but that was a close one. Now, going on into the next fight, I knew I needed to do something about the fact that I constantly was popping up and I was destabilized with the weapon back. So I put on a little stabilizer fin at the back, a little anti-roll fin, there we go. Uh, and this is literally just a piece of HDPE that is bent down and screwed into the back of the robot so that, uh, well, at the moment it's bent too far down, but effectively as the robot comes back, it hits that first and stops it from going too far over, which I hoped was going to help in my next fight against Shrapnel, a very, very nasty horizontal spinner. stabilizer worked well. Uh, that actually did the thing it was designed to do and it meant I got a box rush off and got close to him very quickly out the gate on this one, which was good, but unfortunately box rushes aren't super effective in ant weights, especially when somebody has a machine dialed in like shrapnel is. Shrapnel has a very big weapon motor and not actually a lot of weapon comparatively, so he can spin up that weapon bar very quickly. Uh, and he did that to great effect in this particular fight. He slammed the robot a lot, uh, as you saw in that fight. He also destroyed the dustpan early and got the very thin part of the dustpan bent up and in the way of his weapon. And at that point, I knew that I was going to have a lot of trouble with this particular fight because it just means that I can't really get under him to drop the saw into him, which is what I want to do. I want that control first, and then I want to do the damage, rather than trying to do the damage first and then getting the control later. It just works better that way as a saw bot. But unfortunately, as mentioned, he just went to town. He destroyed the dustpan uh, and then started taking off the arms on the sides that kind of keep robots into the dustpan and then started working on the wheels, knocking out uh, the rubber off the edge of these TPU wheels, which is interesting because I always glue the rubber onto these things. So I'm guessing it's just because I hadn't done that in a while and it was old that the glue had like separated from the rubber maybe, or maybe the rubber has split and left some of the rubber attached to the wheel and anyway. It meant that I was starting to slow down quite significantly. And that was a problem. And that's why I decided to just drop the weapon whenever I could and whenever he was near me, which led to the weapon slamming directly into his weapon 
And yeah, five mil thick titanium or I think, I think is titanium is either titanium or hardened steel weapon versus a 0.7 millimeter tool steel blade. There was never any contest. That went very poorly uh, for Vogon Poetry's weapon. But I mean, it went very poorly for Vogon Poetry in a lot of ways. Vogon Poetry took a lot of damage in this one, but it was a fun, fight and I really enjoyed it and it was a good fight just for how long it went and how much damage Vogon Poetry took and kept going. It wasn't until he did finally manage to disable both wheels that we were actually finally, finally out of this one. Uh, so I, I enjoyed that one. Even a loss can be fun, uh, especially when a loss is like that. Yes, it did mean I had to repair a lot of Vogon Poetry, but weirdly, it was stuff that I wasn't as worried about. I literally, I just cut the dustpan off and replaced it with two millimeter thick sheets of HDPE uh, and some acetate at the front again, because that is fairly easy to do. I didn't have to worry about any of the electronics. I'd replaced the saw blade and we were basically good to go into the next fight. And that next fight is up against a robot called Smasher, driven by one of the youngest drivers in our league. <laughs> Ah, uh, so that's a win, but this is like, I think this is the, the thing for me, right? So the shrapnel fight was good fun because it was a long involved fun fight where I like I was engaged and involved all the way through there. And yes, I lost that fight, but I enjoyed it and it was a good show. This fight, I won that fight and I didn't really enjoy it because there wasn't a lot going on in this fight. Uh, the problem that I was having was that this stabilizer, because of the way it's bent, it's bent like this. Uh, it can bend down that way too far like so and stop the wheels from touching the ground this is an extreme example right here but what we had in the smasher fight was a less extreme example where the wheels were barely touching the ground and effectively the weight of the robot was being taken by the dustpan and by the stabilizer bar which meant that i could barely drive so i wanted to get over there and drop the saw into him and actually see what this saw could do finally but uh, my drive issues prevented me from doing that and unfortunately before I could get anywhere near him he had accidentally driven himself into the pit so despite it being a win it wasn't a great fight um, and you know sometimes fights are just like that. Uh, I will say I loved the fact that he had basically spent all of the time between his fights during the day, just adding more and more googly eyes onto the robot. I think he got up to like 30 something and I was kind of keen to put the saw through a couple of them, but uh, yeah, no, as mentioned, no such luck. So despite the fact that it was a win, it was a quick fight and not really a whole lot to talk about in that one. Yeah, so Vogon Poetry also needs a version two. We are gonna do a version two for Vogon Poetry. Well, it's probably more like a version seven at this point, but this HDPE style Vogon Poetry needs a version two. I've got ideas on how to keep the N20 and also add proportional control to the system. And I want to actually do the stabilizer at the back better because even though I'm gonna have proportional control, it'll be nice to have a stabilizer at the back and not have to be so precise on the angle and direction of the saw blade as I take off. I'll also fix the actual dustpan so that it is better and more resilient and scrapes the ground properly so that people stop hitting it because that was a pain. Uh, but we'll get there. There is lots and lots of things to do for both of these robots. They will both get upgrades and improvements in the future. If you want to see that, uh, subscribe to the channel because they will happen probably not this month but probably next month uh, leading up to the next event for these guys they'll get upgrades and improvements anyway i hope you have enjoyed this one and i will see you in the next video